after three years of struggle and tyranny, finally, Apostate Prophet has released his highly anticipated response to Farid. The process of formally responding to Farid's videos has begun. Let's get a round of applause. Uh, uh, oh. As you can probably guess, he has already failed before he has started. And in this video, I'm going to show you how and why. So without further ado, all I can say is... Okay. Farid is something like the last hope of Islamic apologetics. I'm not joking, by the way, or not completely. His videos about me were endorsed by people like Ali Dawa, Sajid Lipim, Muhammad Hijab, Sheikh Uthman, and many others. This is why Farid is important. He is the best that Islam has to offer. Farid is not the last hope of Islam. Yes, his videos are good, they're beneficial. May Allah reward him in this life and in the next. But there are many people out there who have done refutation videos. If Farid didn't exist or he didn't do his videos, so what? There'll be many people out there who would school you just the same. Now I need you to use your brain here people. Think about this. Who is the person who started making videos on Farid? The big person. Who was it? It was who? Farid responds. Who shouted him out? Initially, one of the few people. Mohammed Ijab. Mohammed Ijab is a big YouTuber. Shouts out a small one. Oh, what happens? Farid grows. Who is Farid responding to? The popular ex-Muslim. The flavour of the month. So what happens? His channel grows. It doesn't take a genius to figure that out. So this part's funny. He proceeds to list a bunch of videos that Farid did not respond to, stating some of the reasons why Farid didn't respond, assuming Farid's intentions. He says one reason why Farid didn't respond is because he actually agrees with the apostate prophet, and that Farid couldn't respond. That's the logic of Ridvan. So basically, if you don't respond to one of Ridvan's videos, it's because you either agree with him or because you can't. Do you remember Christian Prince and how Farid exposed him for over 100 lies? Look at Christian Prince today, he's still kicking around. People are still saying call and debate him. So even if Farid made 100 videos exposing you, it would not make a difference. You will still produce content and your cult following would still believe every single word that you say. Anyway, during this list that AP shows in his video, he shows videos that Farid actually responded to and the fans of the Apostate Prophet can't see this. All you had to do was reconcile the list that Apostate Prophet gave with the videos in Farid's playlists and you see how some match. So in other words he literally lied to his audience and this is clear for anyone to see. By the way I want to note Farid engaged in a lot of personal attacks calling me a rat and a filthy whatever. Hold up wait a minute something ain't right. So as you just heard, he said that Farid engaged in a lot of personal attacks. This is blatant misrepresentation. He tries to make it sound like that's all that Farid does. Why does Ridvan care anyway? He's totally in favour of freedom of speech. Only when it suits him though. But take a look at this guys. The fact that he mentioned it in the video means he clearly took offence from it. At the same time, he mocks the death of Hajj pilgrims and admits he found it funny. Whilst reminiscing over the event with Apostate Aladdin, he stated he should not have said it, but laughs as he says it. He also mocked a Muslim woman by dressing up as her. Why don't you address your blatant hypocrisy? Before trying to come at Farid and other people who are mean to you, in quote unquote commas, look at yourself and how you act. There is a joke that I made at the very beginnings of my uh, YouTube journey in one of my uh, old videos where I talk about uh, the pilgrimage. I made a joke in that in, in one of those uh, old videos where I didn't really care about uh, what I say and all that. And today I feel like, okay, there was a very dumb joke. I shouldn't have done that. But the thing is, I, d I didn't mean any harm with it. It was just uh, a sense of dark humor. I was talking about how Muslims are very you know, dedicated to uh, going on the pilgrimage, doing you know, certain things and dying on the path of Allah. And I said that during some pilgrimages, you know, thousands of people died. And I said, that's what I call a sacrifice. And <laughs> I found it funny in the moment. Hey guys, I have to tell you something. Who's an ex-Muslim today is automatically an expert in Islam. How does that happen? First off, that's a poor question. I never claimed such a thing. I clearly say that I practiced and studied Islam. I am aware that most Muslims are not very much knowledgeable on Islam. So if the average Muslim leaves Islam, that doesn't mean that that person is an expert. But then again, I never claimed that I am an expert. I merely said that I know much more than most Muslims. And I think even Farid himself could admit that that is true because he knows that most Muslims know nothing about Islam. And yes, he's never explicitly said he's an expert on Islam. But what he has said from the off is... I have read the Quran more than three times. I studied the Hadith thoroughly. 
uh, I studied Islam thoroughly. I studied bas basically everything about Islam. I can carefully say that I know more than 85% of all Muslims about Islam. I uh, practiced Islam very, very strictly. I studied it very diligently. I read basically everything that that, that you're supposed to uh, probably study as a, as a Muslim and that most people don't study. Last year, he said he knows more than 90% and recently, 95%. So for somebody who says this and he said he's read pretty much everything and studied things that even most people don't study, you'd think he is competent, he knows the basics. He doesn't even know how Jummah works, the units of prayer, the raqa, in the Jummah prayer. Which extends it to um, four sunnah, four farshars, four sunnah. There is a clear contradiction. You're lying about how much knowledge you actually have. Does he seriously believe that 95% of the Muslim world don't know how many units of prayer there are in the Jummah prayer? Also as well, for somebody who has tremendous knowledge on Islam like he claims, you think he'd be competent in the Arabic language, but he is not and he has said this. And I'll play the clip. It's funny as well because he's upset at how in the EF Dawah video, Farid points out his inability to pronounce Arabic names properly. He couldn't pronounce Zaid bin Thabit properly. He says it as Zaid bin Thabit. The funny thing is, the text is in English. Zaid bin Thabit. May Allah be pleased with him. And Ridwan says Zaid bin Thabit. Where's the double E? It literally says T-H-A-B-I-T. You can break it down like a child. Thabit. And you still read it as Thabit. I can't fucking talk Arabic fluently. Here, you got it. I, I say it, okay? If an adult does this with their own will, that is up to them. If you do this to a little child for no reason at all, except that this is a religious recommendation, then you are mutilating a person, putting them, putting them at risk, possibly destroying their life. Are there any evidences that Islam condemns female genital mutilation? Yes, Ridvan is quoting a hadith that says so right here in the same video. A woman used to perform circumcision in Medina. The Prophet said to her, Do not cut severely, as that is better for a woman and more desirable for a husband. Don't cut too severely. Great. Does female genital mutilation is not promoted in Islam. It's not something which is forced upon women. If women decide they want to get circumcised, that's their choice. It is not obligatory for women in Islam to be circumcised. And if they make their own choice, that they want some work doing down below on the vaginal area, Ridvan has no problem with this. You heard him say, if they do it at their own free will, or their own choice, he's got no problem with it. There are actual health benefits as well with female circumcision, such as unpleasant odours not being present. Let me quote you this. In the book on traditions that affect the health of women and children, which was published by the World Health Organization in 1979, it says, with regard to the type of female circumcision which involves the removal of the prepuce of the clitoris, which is similar to male circumcision, no harmful effects have been noted. Some summary, female genital mutilation in Islam is not a thing. If a woman decides to get circumcised, it's her decision. It is not obligatory upon her to do this, and there is no harmful effect on her health. The castration of slaves. That practice came into the Ottoman Empire from Islamic rule and Arabs. There is a consensus among Islamic scholars that castrating slaves is not permissible. The existence of castrated slaves in an ancient society does not mean that the religion of that society endorses that vile act. Funny, because in my original video, I also never argue that it is part of Islam. In fact, I clearly say, to be fair, this practice was not started by the Muslims, but the Muslim world was the biggest customer of castrated black or white slaves. They were in such high demand that everyone paid more for a castrated slave, which increased the castration of slaves before their import. Therefore, the Islamic world started actively castrating captured slaves as well. So in his second actual argument here, he responds to a straw man. He says Farid straw man here. Ridvan's whole channel is about attacking Islam, Islam, Islam. In the video, what does he say? Islamic. Islamic. The word Islamic is used. Muslim. Muslim. So what are people going to think, especially the fans of the apostate prophet? They will think that, hang on a minute, castrating slaves is an Islamic practice. It's encouraged in Islam. Islam teaches it. This just demonstrates Ridvan's incompetence, how he lacks ability to think of the bigger picture. 
context, honor killing. Honor killings is not a Muslim thing. Honor killings exist in Hindu cultures, Latino cultures in South America, where, where they refer to it as crimes of passion. It's not a Muslim thing. It's not an Islam thing. When in reality, most honor killings happen in Muslim culture and in communities of Muslim backgrounds. He also acts like this has, of course, nothing to do with Islam at all. Well, it does have something to do with this protectiveness, jealous protectiveness, aggressiveness, honor culture, and with Muhammad applauding someone who said that he will kill the guy if he finds his wife together with somebody. Honor killings are not Islamic. I'll play a clip in a second where you'll hear Asim al-Hakim speak about it. But very quickly, the hadith that Ridvan brought up, does he know what a gira is? A gira is protective jealousy, okay? And the guy is saying that if he caught his wife cheating on him, essentially, that's what it says, that he would kill the man who's cheating on his wife. In Islam, anyway, you're not meant to be a vigilante. You don't take the law into your own hands. The Prophet in the hadith is praising his gira, the protective jealousy that he has. Anyway, watch this clip that's coming up now. Honor killing. There's no honor in killing. But whenever they doubt that their daughter spoke to a relative or to a neighbor or thought of getting married to someone from another country, the only way to erase such shame is by killing her. Which means that those culprits would go to hellfire for their major sin and they have nothing to do with islam criticize islam for apostasy laws but don't criticize christianity for apostasy laws persecution of ex-muslims in islam is a video about apostasy refer to deuteronomy 13 9. what farid apparently doesn't understand is that the apostasy laws within christianity belong to the old testament as it is called which means they refer to the israelites to the jewish community before the new testament so pastor ridvan jumps again in defending Christianity, much to the delight of his Christian fans. After all, a lot of his money comes from Christians. I'm not going to speak about Old Covenant and New Covenant thing which Ridvan was talking about. Instead, let's focus on this. Did apostasy laws exist in Christianity, yes or no? The answer is yes. Does Ridvan condemn Christianity for this? He has to. And now if a Christian condemns the Old Testament, condemns the Old Law, how problematic is that? They're condemning their own God. But will Ridvan come out and condemn Christian belief? He will not do this because he wants to appease and keep his Christian audience happy. Later in the video, he reacts to sarcastic tweets by me and takes them seriously. He commented on a post about a mosque being built in the wrong direction by saying 37 years of prayer for nothing. For someone that has read the Quran three times, he should know better. Oh my dude, you just got... Pr 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 ah! It's all just a prank. It's all a joke, guys. When he gets caught out, he just says, joke, you're stupid, you're silly. It's not the first time he's done this. This video on screen over here that you're looking at, he basically ridicules people who took a community post that he'd made seriously. And his own fans took it seriously. So what is Ridvan calling his own fans? Stupid. Also as well, does Ridvan understand what sarcasm is? Let's say you're meeting a friend in a town, in a city centre, in a shopping mall. And let's say it's raining heavily outside. You're inside waiting for your friend. He comes to you and he's like, it was raining so much, you know, I'm so wet. And you're like, oh, really? Your tone's like that, your reaction's like that. That's sarcasm. But what you need to take from this section of the video is that Ridvan lacks humility. Ridvan is allergic to humility. He can't admit he is wrong, that he made mistakes, that he's not knowledgeable about Islam. Despite the fact it's been proven again and again and again by many people. And when he's had debates with people, like on the Thought Adventure podcast against Daniel Hakikachu, he's been shown to lack knowledge, lack common sense, lack intellect. And yet what happens? He can't simply admit in a video saying, guys, look, I'm not knowledgeable. Something along the lines of that. So in conclusion, we waited three years for that. Now this is a start of Rivan's responses, or so it seems. He's got off on a very poor foot. He has lied. He said Farid didn't respond to videos he actually responded to. He misrepresents Farid. He exposes his hypocrisy when it comes to insults. He demonstrates his general incompetence of language, how he doesn't understand implications, semantics. He demonstrates how he's not a reliable person to take information from. Yet people still suck up to him, despite what I'm saying has been demonstrated in the past time and time again. 
So to the Muslims, do you understand why now it is a waste of time to interact with the fans of the apostate prophet? When they worship apostate prophet, they put him up on a pedestal where they think he can do no wrong. Apostate prophet lacks humility. He's not a good person. He's not a good human being. He's not somebody who's interested in honest education, actually learning things. He's not open to being corrected. A person like that, well, what can I say? It's just a waste of time. Thank you all for watching. Inshallah, I'll see you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kaza <laughs> lunga.